Close your eyes. Imagine this. You're on a dark, damp street made of cobblestone. The streets are dimly lit by candlelight, few and far between, casting dark shadows and corners to hide. The air is thick with smog rising from the sewers. The fog is so dense you can't see more than 15 feet in any direction. As you commence down the street, horse-drawn carriages clatter on either side of the road, coming out of the dark, making the fog swirl around you like wisps. In between the noise of the carriages and the barking dogs, you see the ladies of the night selling their wares for a tuppence or two. Trying to pull you into a dark corner to entice you. As you pull away, you see a paper boy shouting out tonight's headlines. You open the paper and the picture is of a dark shadow of a man wearing a top hat and a cape. It is none other than the Whitechapel murderer. You close the paper and look around you. Coming in and out of the fog everywhere, men in top hats wearing capes and walking with canes. Eyes watching you from the streets, lurking in the shadows. Kids running around you trying to pick a pocket or two. If you show any weakness, the night will eat you up and spit you out. You're in my neck of the woods now. This is my home. This is London. Jack the Ripper terrorised East London for 12 weeks in 1888 and targeted prostitutes living and working in one of London's poorest crime districts at the time, Whitechapel. Jack the Ripper was also known as the Whitechapel Murderer. His five known victims were Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes and last Mary Jane Kelly. We'll take a look into the each murder, where it happened and what Jack the Ripper did to the five canonical victims. These five women were known as the canonical five and we know for sure that these five were killed by Jack the Ripper but, and it's very important to remember that Whitechapel was a very densely populated area with high crime rates and low paying jobs. So that number of five victims were probably much higher. The reason the five canonical victims were named just that were due to the time and evidence at the time of death. Also, clues and letters and a postcard that was sent by the killer. The canonical five means the similarities of the victims and the way they were killed sets them apart from other female murders at the time. The five killings happened within a few streets of each other. The Ripper was someone, local, who worked in or around the area and he was an educated upper class man, possibly a doctor who targeted victims in a lower class neighborhood. The Ripper was thought to be a doctor because the way the victim's organs were removed suggested he had extent knowledge of the human anatomy. Hundreds of letters were sent to the police, either claiming to be Jack the Ripper or giving advice on how to catch him. Out of all the letters, many were fake, but there was one which stood out from the rest dubbed the Dear Boss letter, which we'll take a look at shortly. The three main suspects were Aaron Kaminsky, Thomas Cutbush and Montague John Druitt. Because of their place of residence at the time and they were placed in or around the Whitechapel area at the times of death and all three men had the means of carrying out the killings and all three had extent knowledge of the human anatomy. but. Because this happened in 1888, forensic evidence was in its early stages and was nothing close to what we have today. So all three men were cleared due to lack of evidence. So the mystery of Jack the Ripper is still unanswered, but in my opinion, it was Aaron Kaminsky. 
In the making of this video, I did a ton of research and all three suspects were the closest we got to solving the case of Jack the Ripper. If dear old Jack continued to kill, then he would have been caught eventually down the line. But one day, after the five canonical victims, he disappeared back into the dark, foggy streets of my home, London town. Let's take a look at the timeline of Jack the Ripper's murders and the victims and how they died. Jack the Ripper terrorised London in 1888, killing at least five women that we know of, but due to time and lack of resources, that number was sure to be a lot higher, mutilating their bodies in an unusual manner, indicating that the killer had substantial knowledge of the human anatomy. Most people theorise Jack the Ripper to be a doctor or someone in the medical field. The suspect was never captured or even identified. Jack the Ripper remains one of England's and the world's most infamous criminals. All five killings attributed to Jack the Ripper took place within a mile of each other, in or near the Whitechapel district of London's East End. A number of letters were sent by the killer to London Metropolitan Police Service, often known as Scotland Yard, taunting the police about his gruesome activities and speculating on murders to come. The name Jack the Ripper originates from a letter which may or may not have been a hoax, published at the time of the attacks. Despite countless investigations claiming definitive evidence of the brutal killer's identity, his motives are still unknown. In the late 1800s, London's East End was a place viewed by its citizens with either compassion or utter contempt. Despite being an area where skilled immigrants, mainly Jews and Russians, came to begin a new life and start businesses, the district was notorious for squalor and violence and crime. Prostitution was only illegal if the practice caused a public disturbance, and thousands of brothels and low-rent lodgings provided sexual services during the 19th century. At the time, the death or the murder of a working girl was rarely reported in the press or discussed with in polite society. The reality was, ladies of the night were subject to a lot of physical attacks, sometimes ending in death. This was common practice on the streets of London. You knew what you was in for. Jack the Ripper didn't just snuff out life with a knife. He mutilated and disemboweled them, choosing prostitutes because of how easy they were to target. He ripped out their organs, such as kidneys, hearts and lungs, and he didn't stop there. He even carved off their breasts and vaginas and even took their uteruses with him, as a trophy of sorts. Jack's crimes were different to other killers. He stood out alone, and his crimes seemed to portray a hatred for the entire female gender. Old Jackie's murders suddenly stopped in the fall of 1888, but the citizens of London continued to demand answers that would not come. Even more than a century later, we are still none the wiser. The infamous case is still unanswered and remains an open case. This case, which spawned an industry of books, films, TV series and historical tours, met with a number of hindrances, including lack of evidence, a ton of misinformation and false testimony and lack of resources at the time from Scotland Yard. Looking at Jack the Ripper's murder sites today, the first thing that strikes you is the smallness of the locality in which the murders occurred. However, it should be also remembered that London in 1888 was made up of a lot of narrow, unlit alleyways and passageways and it was this labyrinth-like layout of the area that enabled Jack the Ripper to commit his crimes and then melt away into the night. London was so different back then. The street lamps were lit by candlelight and were few and far between, only being used in respectable areas. Also, the streets were paved with cobblestones and dark narrow passageways and alleys. Also, London had a lot of undesirable areas where the police didn't patrol so frequently. And this is where Jack the Ripper would choose his victims, the ladies of the night. The first victim of Jack the Ripper was called Mary Nichols. She was killed on August the 31st, 1888. This was a savage, brutal attack. She was disemboweled and her throat was cut too. 
Looking back at these crimes, we know now that the killing of Mary Nichols was the so-called start of Jack the Ripper's reign of terror. It was during the anti-Semitism troubles on the 8th of September 1888 that the body of a prostitute was discovered in the backyard on 29 Hanbury Street. The Hanbury Street victim was identified as Annie Chapman and this crime and the violence had escalated. Her body was found on the ground with two deep slash wounds on her throat inflicted from left to right of her neck. There were six blood splatterings on the wall and steps which meant that she was killed right in this spot. Next to her body, the police found a leather apron submerged in water. Her left arm was placed across her left breast. Her legs were drawn up, feet resting on the ground, legs apart. Her face was swollen where she had been punched multiple times. Her tongue was swollen too and was sticking out. Her body was terribly mutilated. Rigor mortis hadn't set in yet, but it was commencing. The police decided to make public a letter which had been sent to London's news agency a few days earlier. Written in red ink, it was from the killer himself. The infamous letter is now dubbed the Dear Boss Letter and it was this letter that was signed Yours Truly, Jack the Ripper. And from that moment on, the name stuck. I will now read you the actual letter that Jack the Ripper wrote and sent to Scotland Yard. Dear boss, I keep on hearing the police have caught me, but they won't fix me just yet. I have laughed when they look so clever and talk about being on the right track. That joke about leather apron gave me real fits. I am down on whores and I shan't quit ripping them till I get buckled. Grand work with the last job. I gave the lady no time to squeal. How can they catch me now? I love my work and want to start again. You will soon hear of me and my funny little games. I saved some of the proper red stuff in a ginger beer bottle over on the last job to write with, but it went thick like glue and I can't use it. Red ink is fit enough, I hope. Ha ha. The next job I do, I shall clip the lady's ears off and send them to the police officers just for jollies, wouldn't you? Keep this letter back till I do a bit more work, then give it out straight. My knife's so nice and sharp and I want to get to work right away if I get a chance. Good luck. Yours truly, Jack the Ripper. Don't mind giving me the trade name. Wasn't good enough to post this before I got all the red ink off my hands. Curse it. No luck yet. They say I'm a doctor now. Ha ha. The Night of the Double Murder on the 30th of September 1888, the Whitechapel murderer returned and killed two women in less than one hour. The first victim was Elizabeth Stride. Her body was found at 1am on Burner Street. Blood was still gushing from a wound on her neck and she was still warm. She had a silk handkerchief around her neck. Her neck was deeply gashed and under her right brow she had been hit or punched. Her left earlobe was torn, as if someone had pulled off her earring forcefully. Because she had not been disemboweled, police didn't believe this to be the work of Jackie Boy. Catherine Eddowes The second victim that morning was Catherine Eddowes, who was mutilated horrifically. She was found in Mitre Square at 1.45am on the same night. Her face was mutilated and he also removed and took her uterus and left kidney. Her body was on its back, arms at its side of the body, both palms facing up. Her dress was lifted up over her stomach. Her face had been sliced up and down from side to side and her throat was also cut. And she had a handkerchief also tied around her neck. Her stomach was sliced open and her large intestine was pulled out very violently and a lot of it and placed over her right shoulder. Where the intestine was yanked so roughly, feces had ruptured through the intestines and lay about all over the body. Another piece of the intestines, about two feet long, was cut in place at the side of her body. Her right ear was also cut off and taken. Her body was quite warm and no rigor mortis was present. She had likely been dead for about half an hour. Her kidney was removed and taken. Out of the five women we know that were killed by Jack the Ripper, 
Mary Jane Kelly was the last before Jack the Ripper disappeared into London's foggy night and stepped into the history books as one of the most infamous serial killers of all time. Mary Jane Kelly. Considered to be the Ripper's swan song, Mary Jane Kelly's murder was the most gruesome of all the Whitechapel murders. She was found horribly mutilated, lying on the bed of a single room flat where she lived at 13 Miller's Court, off Dorset Street, Spitalfields. She was discovered at 10.45 a.m. in the morning of Friday, November the 9th, 1888. The landlord's assistant had been sent over to collect the rent, which she had been weeks behind in paying. When she didn't answer the door, he reached his hand in through a crack in the window. Pushing aside a makeshift curtain, what he saw at that moment was absolutely horrible. Unlike the other four victims who were murdered outdoors, Mary Jane Kelly was murdered in her sparsely furnished single room, affording Jack the Ripper an extensive period of time to eviscerate and mutilate her body. Experts estimated Jack the Ripper took over two hours to perform his surgery. Rigor mortis was fully set in. The body was lying naked in the middle of the bed. The head was turned over onto her left side. Her legs were placed wide apart. Her pubic area and stomach and all of the thighs had been skinned and removed. Her stomach was completely emptied of all organs and viscera. The breasts were both cut off. The arms mutilated and sliced by several jagged wounds. Her face was hacked so far beyond recognition of features. The tissue of the neck was severed down to the bone. Her uterus, kidneys and one breast were placed under her head, the other breast by her right foot. The liver was placed between the feet, the intestines on the right side and the spleen by her left. The flaps removed from the stomach and thighs were on the table on the bedside next to her. The bed was soaked in blood and the floor was covered in about two square feet of blood. The walls were covered with blood spatter as he hacked away. Her face was gashed in all directions, the nose, cheeks, eyebrows and ears being partly removed. The lips were sliced down to the chin right across multiple times. The fourth, fifth and sixth ribs were cut out and part of the right buttock was sliced off and left on the floor. The left calf muscle was cut out and the knife penetrated through the shin and onto the other side. Her lungs were broken and torn away probably by hand and her heart had been taken. It is in my unprofessional opinion that given that Jack the Ripper was given the time and security of the private room, his hatred for women and prostitutes were able to surface. His inner demons were released. He knew he wouldn't be disturbed and so he did everything he wanted to do to all the other women, taking out his anger and hatred on poor Mary Jane Kelly. Then, he was gone. Freedom!